Hey, everybody, and welcome back to our monthly market commentary, February 2024 edition. I'm Brad Gatto, CEO and founder of Fiat Wealth Management, and I've got my uh, sidekick, as always, here with me, Mr. Tim Holland, the Chief Investment Officer over at Town Square. Orion, Tim, thanks for being with us again uh, Always February. Good. Always good to be with you, Brad. Um, hard to believe it's already February, but as we've talked about before, yeah. the, older, the older you get, the faster the calendar pages seem to turn. So anyway, it's great to see Yeah, uh, The days can be long, but the years are short, right? There you go. There um, you go. The threads, the threads as always, Tim, look great. The suit Thank is uh, perfectly fit there, but the background's different. Yes. Uh, you're not at home. Where are you? I am not at home. I am the great, I am in the great state of Idaho, uh, Boise to be exact. You know, I'm just thinking sort of Minnesota to Idaho, sort of how that plots out from a longitude or latitude, latitude. Um, but yeah, so uh, just up here seeing- I was going to say, don't ask me because I don't know. <laughs> I, sh I should always remind myself not to go down a path that I don't know where the path ends, but I always forget. Uh, <laughs> but it, things are things are good up here in Idaho. The economy seems to be doing pretty well. Uh, the flight in last night was full. Um, yeah. But it's just uh, nice nice to be with you all on, on mountain time. I, I love, I love Idaho. Time. I've spent a good amount of time there. Uh, yeah. Met a lot of great people in Idaho. When I think of Boise, all I think of is blue turf. Yeah, um, yeah. Boise State, sort of turf, right? As they like yeah. to call it up there. Yeah, uh, they know how to play football. And guns i think per capita uh i don't have more guns than any state in the union i interesting don't, you fact check me i i don't I know if that's right i'll look um, into that once we're done i'm at home I'll, I'll come back to you not in idaho but i got a, I got a hoodie on I'm, I'm on my way to the airport but i gotta you know you gotta give the people what the people want tim and we gotta get our monthly market commentary out so you guys yeah. get me in a hoodie today as i go catch a flight um but here we go let's jump right in uh, if you're new to our monthly market commentary, there's going to be three points. We're going to look back at the last month. We're going to look ahead to what's coming this month and then just give you a fun data point to go off of. And so first point is a look back. I'm calling this point Boo Hawks. Now, that's really hard for me to even get out of my mouth because if you know anything about me, I'm a diehard oh, Hawkeye fan. There's the right. Tiger Hawk right there. And so it's hard for me to even write this down. Obviously, I'm not referencing my beloved Iowa Hawkeyes. What I am referencing is the Fed. <laughs> uh, we talked about we've talked about the Fed. I don't know how how you know the last however many months. Um, but Powell has done it again. He kind of rattled markets with a hawkish tone. Um, in other words, he didn't do what we thought he was going to do at the end of the month when the Fed met. Uh, Tim, can you speak to that? Kind of what was the expectations the markets had? What did the Fed actually do, and what does that mean? Yep. Um... So the Fed uh, met at the end of January. Uh, to go back in time uh, just for a second, um, the December meeting was was a mid month was a big meeting as well because coming out of the December meeting, they let the world know that um, based on the polling of the committee members and what they think interest rates should should should, should get to uh, in December, yeah. they announced that um, there was a big change. Uh, they weren't expecting any more rate hikes, and they were expecting three rate cuts in uh february in 2024 um and the market did quite well in the year end the markets like lower interest rates the cheaper money is always welcomed on wall street for sure and then to brad's point they met in january and they didn't raise rates or cut rates and no one expected them to do anything but um following each meeting chairman powell holds a press conference the presser as they call it i guess in in, in pr speak yeah. and during that press conference he pushed back pretty forcibly on the idea that a rate cut would be coming at the March meeting, the next meeting. So I think we've talked about this. Uh, the Fed is guiding to three rate cuts. The market expects five, if not six. So there's a bit of a disconnect. Yeah. And when uh, uh, Chairman Powell held this press conference, announced no changes to the, to, to the Fed funds rate as expected, he let the world know that it was going to be a pretty long or high bar to get over for a rate cut come March. Markets were expecting a more dovish tone. So usually in, in central bank parlance, hawkish means you're more inclined to raise rates or keep rates steady. Dovish means uh, you're more inclined to cut rates. So that spooked the markets a little bit. Bonds sold off, yields moved higher, equities fell a little bit. Um, a lot could happen between now and March. I think if you get a couple of bad economic data points, including a bad jobs report, and that clearly wasn't the case 
for the January job support, yeah. I think the Fed could pivot. But that's really what um, markets were a little disappointed um, in that press conference. And I think the big issue this year will be getting the Fed and the market on the same page vis-a-vis -vis rate cuts, because right now they're kind of uh, uh, a little bit um, on, on, on different sides of, of, of things. So interest, interestingly enough, they meet again in March. He's already kind of set the tone that uh, don't expect it again. Doesn't mean I'm going to yeah. be cutting rates in the next meeting either. March yeah. is the, so what I learned in kindergarten, Tim, was March is the month of in like a lion, out like a lamb. I think yep. the markets are hoping in like a hawk, out like a dove. So we'll, that. we'll, see, how, we'll good. see how March goes. That's pretty good. That's, I remember. Well, thank you. I just came up with that on the spot. So <laughs> you should trademark that. I remember walking the halls of Sacred Heart in South Trenton. Yeah, and each month we would do something different. I, yeah, I'll never forget, six or seven years old and like a lion, a lion out like a lamb. That's really good. I think that you would, the markets would be thrilled if if that's where things ended up for sure. The the big like to do every day in kindergarten that I remember when March came was every day, depending on the weather, we would put a lion or a lamb on the calendar and whoever, whatever kid got to put that up on the calendar was kind of a big deal. So I bet um, that was a that big is deal. like ingrained in my head. So hopefully That's we're in funny. like a hawk out like a dove. We'll see how she goes. I like it. All right. Yep. A look ahead. We already kind of looked ahead a little bit, but that, we're not going to yeah. use that point uh, for March. So looking ahead to what's coming, uh, I'm naming this point, not even Vince Lombardi had an 80% win rate. And if Vince right. Lombardi can't do it, who's doing it? Well, the S&P 500, the companies in the S&P 500, they're starting to report earnings. Now we don't have all 500, but of the ones that have at yeah. last count around 175, 180 or somewhere around there, doesn't, numbers, specific number doesn't matter, but 80% yeah. of them are beating expectations. And I would say the expectations weren't like low. It's not like yeah. we were expecting like bad earnings or anything like that. It was just they're coming in better than expected to the tune of 80%. Talk to me a little bit about that. What's going on? Why are so many companies beating expectations? And what does that mean for us? Yeah, quick question before I do, though. Being a resident of the great state of Minnesota, are you allowed to quote? <laughs> and talk about I, Vince Lombardi? I didn't How, quote Lombardi. I just... True. How's that work? My okay. defense, in my defense, the Super Bowl is coming up on Sunday. And although I live in the state of Minnesota, I'm a 49ers fan. So I'm really hoping Lombardi comes back into my life on Sunday. For All the right. Niners. Okay. Ah, there you go. The Lombardi trophy. Yeah. Now, one of my favorite Lombardi quotes, there's a great book written about him 20 years ago or so, maybe more called When Pride Still Mattered. And um, the quote was, um, and it talked about his time in Green Bay and, and, and in New York with the New York football giants and then Washington his whole life and the cultural zeitgeist at the time, but his line to his players, I think before every game was, you know, when you get to the end zone, act like you've been there before, yeah. which I just think is so classy. And obviously the world's kind of gone yeah. in a completely different, but I'm a huge, huge Lombardi. It's funny that fan. you say that because one of my favorite players outside of the 49ers is Barry Sanders for the simple reason. They scored oh. a ton of touchdowns. He run to the end zone, hand the ball to the ref and run to the sideline. Yep. There was That's no, it. No, uh, it's just like, yeah, this is my job. This is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, so. no, I love it. I'm, I was a big fan of his too. So, um, so in terms just put of the earnings, old school patch on both of us, like we're just like <laughs> showing a little well, age and, here. And and not to talk football too much. At one point for the Giants, before Lombardi went to uh, the Packers, so Lombardi and Tom Landry were the respective coordinators for, for the New York football giants. You talk about just, you know, football genius. And, and, and there's a great picture of them yeah. on the sidelines, trench coats, fedoras, the whole, the whole thing. Um, well, so I derailed terms... us with my headline. What we're supposed to be talking about <laughs> I'm sorry. is Q4 earnings and the fact that these S&P companies are, uh, they're rip roaring right now. Yeah, no. So it's, it's a big deal. You're right. So we're about 200 companies through the 500 that make up the S&P in terms of reporting Q4 results. Uh, most companies are on a calendar year. So they close Q4 into December, takes a couple, three weeks to get the book squared away. And then they let the world know what they earned and, and what they did in sales. And so right now, to your point, Brad, about 80% of companies are reporting earnings results that are above Wall Street's expectations. Now, normally a majority do beat expectations, but 80% is well above the long-term average and earnings growth is coming in a little north of 6%. So obviously they're yeah. the high profile companies of the world, the metas, the old Facebooks, but you know everything else in terms of pharmaceuticals and industrials and the like. And that's a big deal because 
Q3 earnings season, um, also saw earnings growth with high single digits. It looks like we're going to get high single digits again for Q4, knock on wood. That followed three consecutive quarters where earnings declined year on year. So, and we were talking about this before we hit record. You know, markets had a great year last year. The S&P is up almost 5% year to date. It can feel maybe to some of us like we've kind of gone too far too fast. Um, but markets still go up much more than they go down. About 80% yeah. of the time, the market's up. It's not It's not lower. And the backdrop this year is probably going to be, you know, reasonable earnings growth and declining interest rates. And if corporate America kind of keeps up the earnings growth and the Fed does cut, even if it's not as much as Wall Street would like, that's a pretty powerful combination for the market. So um, Q4 earnings off to a really good start. Uh, bond yields have kind of moved sideways a little bit. We're getting closer probably to the first cut. So um, there's a lot of reason to be optimistic um, uh, this year, even following on a really great 2023. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, point number three is a data point worth discussing. So my name for this point is actually a joke. So I got a joke for you, you ready? Okay. Why did three leave the party? I don't know why did three leave the party. Because it couldn't even. <laughs> what that has something to do. We're going back to the we're going back to the Fed here. So the Fed is guiding <laughs> my my uh my headlines are derailing us. Um That's awesome. so uh, we talked about this. The Fed was guiding towards three rate cuts. You talked about the market was kind of expecting six rate cuts in 2024. Yeah. Um, but some are wondering if the Fed can basically do that with the economy yeah. growing the way that it is. So how do those two things work in tandem? So even if we buy the Fed's version of rate cuts and we don't yeah. go into the market's version of it, which is much more aggressive, much more dumb. Yeah, yeah. How can they possibly do that? Or what data is out there to lead us to believe um, with the economy growing at a three plus percent rate that they're going to make that happen? Yeah, no, it's we're really interesting point in the monetary policy cycle, potentially, right? Uh, the Fed took rates from zero to five and a half percent, last raised rates last July, and then went on pause through December and announced that they the next move would be lower unless you get some sort of inflation yeah. shock to the system, which we shouldn't get. So um, that does that begs the 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 question that you just asked. Well, if the economy is growing about three percent, you know, how can the Fed cut? interest rates. It seems like things are pretty good. And 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 why do we need lower borrowing costs? So the way the Fed operates, and, and I think we've talked about this, uh, it's got a dual mandate, uh, price stability or inflation of about 2% and full employment. Um, the idea is the monetary policy should hopefully create an environment where prices are stable, up a little bit year on year, and where anyone who wants to get a job uh, can get a job. So right now you've got the unemployment rate under 4% and the inflation rate at two and change, depending on what gauge or, or, or data point you use. And that's down from an inflation rate of high single digits a couple yeah. years ago. So the Fed funds rate is at five and a half percent and the inflation rate is running at two and a half to three percent. So in Fed speak, that means that the real Fed funds rate is, is meaningfully positive or restrictive. It's well above the rate of inflation. And because interest rates take a long time to hit the economy, even though things look good really now, the Fed is starting to worry that a 5.5% Fed funds rate and what it's done to credit card interest rates and auto loan interest rates is going to slow the economy. Um, it should eventually, and I think it will. And if they wait too long to cut rates, the economy is going to go from really good to slow to a recession because it takes a while for rate increases or decreases to impact behavior. So the Fed can justify cutting rates because, and and I think they'll they'll use this narrative. Uh, Inflation is around two and a half three percent. The Fed funds rate is two and a half to three percent higher than that. So we can cut rates, lower borrowing costs a little bit, without worrying yeah. that we're throwing too much money or too low of a borrowing cost at the broader economy and inflation will spike as a result. So as long as that Fed funds rate is meaningfully above the rate of inflation, uh, the Fed can justify lower rates, lowering rates at least a little bit, maybe not as much as the market would like, um, but but they've got this big buffer now and, and I think they're gonna take advantage of it. And, and the Fed hasn't done everything 
right? And people are so upset about much higher prices today than three years ago, yeah. which I get. But one could argue that the Fed's done a really good job the last year, year and a half, putting the inflation genie back in the bottle and hopefully um, uh, managing to pull off kind of a soft landing where you don't get a, a real downturn in the economy. They, they may stick the landing, as, as they say. Tim, I, I say this in the most complimentary way possible. That was some nerdy stuff. That was, <laughs> uh, it was very good. I'm going to try to simplify it by just saying this. And, and you tell me if I'm, if I'm way off base here, but okay. basically the, the argument you could make with the, the economy running as, as well as it is. And the idea that they would, can, they would actually cut rates, uh, yeah. is the fact that the economy doesn't work like high speed internet. A lot of times the yeah. reaction speed from what the fed does and how that hits the street it's dial yeah. up internet. Yep. And we're still hearing that noise that rings in the back. I'm not going to try to replicate it in the back of all yeah. of our minds. Yeah. 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 Dial up internet is. You've uh, got mail. Tom, Tom Hanks and um, Meg Ryan. Love that movie. Sorry, yeah. Go ahead. yeah. Uh, we're waiting for it to hit. It, there is some lag time. And so yeah. it's extremely possible that it just hasn't completely come to fruition yet. Uh, yep. What's happened with interest rates. And so. Uh, it remains to be seen, but it's definitely data yeah. points uh, worth watching. If you can't tell from the look back, which we then looked ahead into March, and then was a data point worth discussing, interest rates are probably the hottest topic right now yeah. as it relates yeah. to kind of what's going on in the economy. But we've got good data coming out of uh, Wall Street early in, in 2024. I almost said 2023. Yeah. I, almost I know, right? Takes a while to get um, used to that. And I, we don't have time to dive into this, so I don't want to open Pandora's box, but I know you guys did a deep dive, uh, and maybe we can put this in the show notes. Uh, you guys did a deep dive on January and, and mm -hmm. how how January performs relative to, like, if, it, if, if January is up, typically what happens the rest of the year. If January is down, typically what happens. So we'll put that in the show notes. But we had a good January. We're off to a good start here. But I would, I would tell all of you listeners this, and I know I'm going to sound like a broken record, and that's 100% on purpose. This is why we diversify. This is why we solve for outcomes. Because although a lot of the data is good and although the markets are up, if you're out there stock picking, I'm going to pick on you. Because if you picked Tesla recently, you don't look like a genius. If you picked Meta recently and waited for their earnings to come out and dumped your life savings there, uh, you're the biggest genius on the planet. And those are two of the most well-known names uh, in that S&P 500 index. And so although the data is good, it doesn't mean every company is good. Yeah. Right. Uh, and Tesla is a great example in the very short term anyway of of what can happen uh, when we pick individual positions to try to invest money. So uh, bottom line is we're still solving for income here. There's still meat on the bone, although interest rates aren't what they were a, a couple of months mm -hmm. ago. Still a lot more meat on the bone today to live yeah. on from an income perspective for retirees uh, than there has been in the past. Uh, so that's still good news for us going into 2024 um, and really anticipating more more good news uh, in the yeah. coming months. And so we'll see how March plays out. Uh, Tim, love, always love it. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us while you're not even at home, taking time out uh, from your visit to uh, Idaho and uh, look forward to uh, getting back with you in March. Yeah, no, me too. Always great to see you. Always great to be with you. Um, thanks for the chance to share our thoughts around the markets and the economy and uh, safe travels, uh, Brad. And I just want to make sure I want to give you permission. You can use yeah. my joke. Okay, so if you want to, <laughs> I may I don't know if I'm going to use. It. I'm just going to be honest. We're friends. I don't know if I'm going to use that, but I may use the in like a hawk, out like a dove. All right, fair enough. That's I'm coining it just so you know. So you yeah, gotta... look, I mean, if, if there's some sort of licensing fee I have to pay, let me. Um, oh yeah, let me know. Seventeen joke... cents a month. There you go. The joke. The month. joke was great, but I'm probably going in the other direction. I'm just going to be honest with you. That's fair. That's okay. fair. I, I, if I said anything that you reuse, I feel I feel wonderful. So you're very kind. All right, thanks, brother. All right, I'll see you.